few uh, good fry channel cat here that we caught splat fishing at the end of our earlier fishing. So we're going to do a fillet job here real quick. We're going to start right here at the dorsal fin. There's a bone right here and this bone will keep you from cutting from here down like you would on a normal fish. So I go just inside of this bone, behind this bone, down here to what they call the anal fin. Cut down, lay my knife down along the backbone here and then pull or push. Takes that fillet right off. Do the same thing on the other side. Cut down. Bend and turn my knife, pull. That's off. So here. Now, this Matt Gaskill, Gaskill Knives, made me this custom fillet knife here. One of the first ones he made. Um, I think I cleaned 150 crappie with this before I ever sharpened the knife again. It bends a long, long ways, but this thing is so sharp, if you mess up a little bit on this fillet job here, it will leave the skin on. So, as you see there, there's a perfect channel cat fillet. I'm gonna do this other side, lay the knife down flat here, pull the skin as I pull the knife, and that is it. Boneless, ready to go. No reason to worry about red meat on this. There's not enough on it to give it the fishy taste. Ready to cook. So here we've got a blue cat that we caught today. Uh, I've already taken the tail off so we can bleed this fish out. It really doesn't do anything for the taste of the fish. All it does is make your fillets wider and cleaner when you do them so you don't have to wash them out. So we're going to do a quick fillet job on this, including the belly meat, which is one of the best parts of the entire fish. Again, start here at this dorsal fin, come down inside of this fin here so I don't get into the uh, gut cavity. Take this, pull the knife. He's uh, being a little difficult here. He's already been uh, dispatched, but his nerves are kicking a little bit, so he's moving. All right, so one side of the flame, turn him over. Same thing from here, dorsal fin all the way down. Turn my knife fillet so you can pull the fish or the knife. All right, so this is off. Come down here, lay the knife flat. And on a blue cat, I normally try to leave a little bit of meat on the fillet, as you see here, and that is the red meat. So when I turn this fillet over, you're gonna be able to see where I miss that red meat. See how half of it has red on it? This is why most people think catfish taste muddy. This is the fat on the fish. This is where they store all their fat. And this is what has that muddy taste that a lot of people complain about with catfish. If you take this red off, this will be one of the cleanest tasting, whitest fillets that you have. And you do it with saltwater fish as well, not just on the catfish. But catfish do really get a bad taste, a bad uh, name because of this. So like, oh, that's such a muddy tasting fish. They taste like mud. Well, it's simply because they did not remove that red meat. All right, cut that. Okay, so cutting from here down, you have all this, it's a muscle right here. So we're gonna go in front of this little bone right here on the dorsal fin, turn the knife down and cut down here towards the rib cage, turning my knife out as I do so. And then you have this big nugget of meat right here that's extremely white and we call that a fish nugget all right and that's what we fry up a lot and i have to fight my wife and kid to get that off of them because they like it so much that they tend to grab it out of the pan before i have a chance now that's unless they can find the belly meat which we'll be doing in the little next segment here Cat and belly meat is the interior here by the stomach and all that. If that bothers you and grosses you out, this is where you want to cut out and not watch until the end when we start cooking. So, but this belly meat is a boneless, big thing of meat right here. It's one of the richest tasting meat on a fish. So here's how you get the belly meat. Go underneath the dorsal fins right here, cut down an angle all the way down here under the head to the gills. And then I like to lay my knife at an angle between my fingers under the rib cage here and pull all the way down to these other fins. Repeat this on the other side of the fish. Cut, turn under the ribs, lift my knife, and then I go lift with my thumb and go right here out the other side. 
so I can cut this part open. And then there's an interior skin that you have to cut right here, all the way down past the insides of the fish to get this part out. All right, once that's out, I lay my knife flat right here by these fins and I bend them until they're no longer under my knife blade and I lift to take this section of meat out. This is not uh, the edible section of the fish, but it removes almost everything off of that fish that is edible or don't have to deal with bones. Now you have two sections of skin you gotta deal with here. You have the silver interior skin and then the white exterior skin. So we're gonna start with the white exterior skin. I find a corner like this right here. I wanna lift it up and I cut between the meat and the skin where I can put my fingers on it and hold the skin down and then use my fillet knife to move back and forth and get this meat off of the white skin on the bottom. Once I got the white skin off on the bottom, you can see there's two sections here. I lay my knife under the middle edge here because there's fat on this side. And then I cut this silver skin from the inside out. And then you have this hunk of meat right here. All right, you can see the texture of the meat goes this way. I lay the meat like this and cut it like this into strips. Um, and this is a rich, fantastic meat that my son and wife love to take from me. I usually try to cook it last when I cook, so I, everybody else is filled up on uh, fried biscuits, tater tots, and things like that, or fries before I do this. But it doesn't work, because now my wife can pick it out of the pan, uh, knows what it looks like, so we have to be very selective on where we cook and put that. So we're gonna be doing, we got peanut oil on the high heat here, getting ready to go. And some of us are older, so I cannot eat cornmeal anymore. So my favorite of all fish fries and stuff, of course, is Zatarain's Crispy Southern Fish Fry or Zatarain's Crispy Cajun Fish Fry. But being that I cannot eat the uh, corn product like that anymore, I have switched over to Louisiana's seasoned beer batter which I'm gonna be using on the catfish tonight while we do this up. So I have several pieces that are already cut up. This will be for freezer because we don't need that many. Um, I gotta check and see if this is where it needs to be. That is not hot enough yet. It's not popping when it gets hit by any kind of wet or anything like that. So it'll be just a little while. We gave them about one minute on the first side, rolled them over. Now we've got a golden brown, great crusted chunk of fish here. So we'll take them out. We have this great rat. I have no idea where my wife ordered this thing, but uh, I'm sure it was Amazon or something like that. Where'd you get it at, wife? Pampered Chef. Pampered Chef. Okay. That's not me. You know by my tongs that I'm not a pampered chef. So we'll get these out, get them cleaned up, and then uh, we'll do the uh, Texas thing, which is catch up on fried fish, people. We don't use tartar sauce down here unless you're a transplant from somewhere else or hot sauce. Okay. Okay, so we have our taster monkey right here, the Johnny. All right, there's a piece of fish and all. Grab it with your hands like a young man. Take a big bite and tell us what you think. Is it good? Yeah. Come over here, <laughs> run away. Come over here. Come tell my mom what you think. Look at mommy, tell her what you think. Yeah. It's good? Okay. white, real flaky fish, all right? I like the cornmeal, but I can't have the cornmeal. So, I mean, out of this right here, I give this a nine out of a 10. It's, it's really a fantastic fish. I don't know what he said, but apparently he liked it. Thanks for being with us on uh, All Out Outdoors. Down the bike.